Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming a video which is five worst and five best fragrances. Now this is actually a tag video um, which I've not been tagged in but caring is sharing and I'm going to do it anyway but I thought it would be fun so yeah I'm going to hop on the trend and just a disclaimer um, th these are not going to be my five best fragrances ever in my collection. They're going to be a mixture of five fragrances that I love and I'm trying to do a combination of different types of scents from sweet to spicy, but also designer and niche. And then for the five worst, um, I just want to add again that this is a disclaimer, just because I dislike these fragrances does not mean that it, they're actually bad fragrances. It just means that I don't gel with them. It's not something I resonate with and I thought it would be fun. So yeah, let's just crack on. I am going to start with five best because we want to start on a high, of course. So let's get cracking with one of my favourites, which is Gris Chanel from BDK. And Gris Chanel um, actually gained popularity over the last couple of years. And it's a very um, cool girl, slightly clean scent. And I'm going to give you a bit of a backstory about why I love this one. So I had a particular outfit that I wanted to wear. And I felt like I didn't have a fragrance to match that outfit. And the outfit was kind of like leather pants and chunky Doc Martens and a really chic um, tailored white tweed blazer. And I felt like I needed like a clean slash cool girl fragrance to go with that vibe. And I'd smelt Gris Chanel before. So I knew this was the one that I needed in my collection. And I have zero regrets. I absolutely love it. And just so I can like give off what the vibes actually are. It's not super sweet, but it's also like not spicy or woody or heavy. It's a thick fragrance that also has cardamom in it. Um, I believe it has iris. What else does it have in it? Let me just quickly check. Black tea, I'm missing like the biggest one. Black tea and tonka bean. And it is just a beautiful everyday fragrance that doesn't lean like too much either way. I really do pick out the fig and the black tea in this. And I just think it's like effortlessly chic, a very cool girl fragrance. And yeah, I highly recommend this if you haven't tried it. Next, we're going to move on to a designer fragrance. And this is Pure Musk by Narciso Rodriguez. And this is actually my favorite from the Narciso lineup. And this, again, like the one similar, I wouldn't necessarily call it a cool girl fragrance, but it definitely is a clean fragrance. And the occasion I would choose to wear this is um, either out of the shower, to bed, or an occasion where I don't want to overwhelm people with my fragrance, but I want to smell good, clean and fresh. So I choose to wear this at like work conferences as an example, or where there's going to be a lot of people in a room, um, but you don't want to draw too much attention. You just want to smell really good. It's really simple. Um, it just smells musky. It's got slight floral hints and then it has cashmere in it. But yeah, it's just a gorgeous everyday musky scent, really inoffensive and highly recommended from like the designer world. Next up is definitely a favorite and that is Killian Angel Share. And I wanted this for a long, long time. Um, but I hadn't been able to get my nose on it. So I've got this new thing now where I either get a sample or I need to test it in person before I buy. Sometimes I do break that rule and I blind buy, but I try not to. So the feeling I get from this and the vibes I get is this is a warm, sticky, spiced apple pie. It is so delicious and it is going to get compliments. It doesn't lean either way. It's not too feminine. It's not too masculine. It's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's so good. It's almost gourmand, um, but it's not sickly in any way. But yeah, if you want to smell like a snack and you want to smell like a warm, resinous, juicy and sticky apple pie, I think it has cognac in it as well. Honestly, beautiful and can't really deny that that bottle does not stand out on the shelf. So next, we're going to go over to a more affordable option. And this one is an absolute staple in my collection. And that is Kiali Vanilla 28. And for me, the reason why I love Kiali um, Vanilla 28 is because this is the perfect mix-in fragrance. 
it goes with everything so you can wear it on its own and it will be absolutely stunning and i do wear it on its own very regularly but um if you want to mix it with a different fragrance to add that kind of vanilla brown sugar vibe or sweeten something up then it is the perfect mixer so mainly what i get from vanilla 28 is it is a really um sexy dark vanilla which has um, lots of brown sugar in it and a little bit of tonka um it is by far my favorite from the kiali um collection i wouldn't be without this and yeah i think for the price point and for what you get it is definitely one of the best vanilla fragrances on the market hands down um and that is because it works so well for so many occasions so yeah kiali vanilla 28 and last but not least in the best section we have fragrance dubois santal complete and first of all how stunning is the bottle but secondly I find this fragrance so addictive and the reason I wanted it is because I really wanted a sandalwood and coconut fragrance in my collection that was giving me kind of everyday wear that was transitional so you could wear it for all seasons but I also really wanted a coconut fragrance that was not giving off um, suntan lotion vibes and this is just perfect for that occasion. It's a really um, woody, coconut, sensual, perfect for every day, can wear any season. Again, it doesn't lean either too feminine or too masculine. It's perfectly down the middle. The longevity is really good on this one. And I just think it's a staple in any collection, which is why it's in um, my five best. So yeah, without going into any more detail, I just think this one's stunning and you can't go wrong um, with Santel Complete. So yeah, that was the five best. And I tried to pick um, fragrances that kind of were across different categories. Like I say, that weren't too obvious. So it wasn't your typical, you know, Baccarat's. It wasn't your Delina's. Um, these are, some of them have a bit of hype around them, but they're not too, too popular. So let's get on to the five worst and there are going to be a couple in here that might shock some people but it is just my preference and I'm not saying they're bad fragrances at all I just really don't gel with them so I'm going to grab my list because um I only have a bottle of one of these and it's not actually my bottle so the first one is a male um targeted fragrance and it is extremely popular and i'm not saying this is a bad fragrance but i do not like it and that is dior sauvage i always want to say sausage and i don't think it's bad i can see what they're doing they've designed something that is obviously um, meant to be mass appealing as with a lot of designer fragrances and um, yeah I hate saying the word generic but it is kind of like a generic male fragrance and you're not going to smell bad if you wear this but you're not really going to grab attention wearing Sauvage. To me this just smells like um, I think it reminds me of like when my dad used to shave and then he used to put like the splash fragrance on or you'd put some kind of face cream. It just kind of smells like freshly shaven man um, or a bit body wash vibes. Like this is giving me a little bit of links as well. So I'm sorry, I know probably a lot of people own this in their collection, but for me, it's a no. And this is in my partner's collection. He did not purchase this. It was actually a gift um, and I don't think he's ever worn it but you know when you're gifted something you don't really want to say no. Okay the next four fragrances I don't own and I don't want to own. I have tried to own two of them and they didn't work out for me. One of them I decluttered. So what I'm going to try and do and I don't know how this is going to go I'm going to try and put the picture here on the screen. So the first one is BDK Tuberose Imperial, Bing. <laughs> and 
there's a bit of a backstory here. So I think BDK is amazing. Obviously, I had Grace Chanel in my favourites, but I gen generally do not like tuberose as a fragrance note, um, especially when it's done in a specific way, which I feel like a lot of white florals are done. To me, tuberose gives off that hairspray vibes, um, very old fashioned. And I know Tuberose Imperial is a popular fragrance um, and I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but for whatever reason, I react really badly to it. I just dislike it and that's that. I don't want to apologize for it because it is what it is. So let's move on to the next and let's go a bit away from that kind of theme. And I'm going to move on to one that's actually quite popular and I think quite a lot of men like this fragrance and it is Mason Crivelli's Patchouli Magnetic. Bing! <laughs> I need to stop doing that. And I've only tried this in the Discovery set and wow, this is potent. One spray max, maybe two. And I think some people could pull this off, but for me, this was way too powerful. It was very, very nauseating. And it was the only one I didn't like in the uh, Mason Crivelli Discovery set. Um, I don't mind patchouli, um, but for me, it just didn't work. I haven't actually smelt it on someone else, so I would be interested um, to see how it pulled on someone else's skin. But for me, it was beast mode, literally beast mode, but also really didn't enjoy the scent profile. So... Sorry, not sorry, that one is another hate on my list. So, fourth. Okay, this is an extremely popular female fragrance. I think this will be in a lot of females' top perfumes. And that is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. And this is one that I actually used to own when I was younger, um, at least 10 years ago, maybe more. And I'm not saying this is a bad fragrance because it is absolutely not a bad fragrance. But there is a reason why I dislike it. And it's not necessarily a dislike. Sometimes I dislike it, sometimes I don't mind it. And it does make a difference to how much someone sprays of this fragrance. But in the UK, it's heavily duped. So there's a lot of dupes around. But whenever I smell this, for whatever reason, people go crazy on the sprays and it is so intense. Like I can smell this from a mile away. I smelled it in the supermarket the other day. There was no one even near me, but I could smell it. And um, I smell it on people all the time. I can always pick up what it is straight away. And I say, oh, you're wearing Coco Mademoiselle. And they're like, yeah. And it's just so strong. People really overspray this. And this is when I do not like it. Not a bad fragrance at all. I just smell it way too often. And from that and from the overspraying, I've just kind of amassed a bit of a dislike for it. So unfortunately, that is on my hate list too. And last but definitely not least, and again, this is going to get um, some frowns for it. I've never heard someone actually say they dislike this one. Um, but if you understand my backstory um, for Tuberose Imperial, you will understand so my last hate, and I feel really bad for this because the bottle's stunning and I can appreciate in some ways, is Armani Privé Rouge Malakut. And I did own this. And my first initial reaction to it when I sprayed it on the paper is, well, you have tuberose in it, but I think I can get to like you. And then... I kind of let it settle and it didn't bother me so much. So the next day, sorry, I'm just getting, um, oh, I don't have it up. I was going to say I'll get the notes up. And then the next day I think, oh, I'll wear it on my skin. Oh man, shouldn't have done that. I had to scrub that off. Tuberose for me is just, it just doesn't work normally. There are a couple of tuberose fragrances I like and I can see that um, Rouge Malachite is blended really well. But when I get um, orange blossom and tuberose combined, I normally will not like it. But then throw in your lang your lang as well, and it's like game over. We're we're not gelling. We're not friends, and it's really annoying. And I always try to like tuberose because it's in so many fragrances, um, and I want to like it. But for whatever reason, I have a really adverse reaction to it, 
and I just honestly get hairspray vibes. And I know that that's not most people's opinion and I know it's beautifully blended and I feel really guilty for saying it. Um, but yeah, Rouge Malachite's not for me. So sorry guys, I know there's a lot of lovers for that. And that's why I say, um, you know, go out and try these fragrances. My opinion is just mine and you'll likely have different reactions to it to me. And perfume is very subjective. But yeah, that is another dislike for me. So yeah, that is my roundup of my five best and five worst. I could do more of these. Um, there's definitely more in the best and there's more in the worst, but yeah, I just thought I'd start there. I hope um, you found this entertaining at the very least. Um, but yeah, if you wanna add in like what some of your bests are, what some of your worsts are, or if you even have a different opinion to me, so are some of my um, worst your favorites? I can imagine some of them might be. Just let me know. But yeah, if you wanna see more content like this, please like the video, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. I'm very new to this and I want to improve all of the time. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.